Now, what he's going to talk about here are actually three worlds in one. Now, that's not something strange to us. I'm sure most of us have bought a polish, shoe polish, that's known as two-in-one shoe polish. And then one of the sewing machine companies got out an oil. They call it three-in-one oil. Now, I don't know what the three uses that it's for, but it's called three-in-one. Well, you and I live in a three-in-one world, actually. We've heard a great deal about the one-world theory today, and certainly it's moving in that direction when a world dictator is going to take over today. I don't think there's any question about that now in the minds of many thoughtful men. Great thinkers of this generation, or this century, I probably should say, they have all taken the position that we've come to a crisis and the end of man on the earth as they thought. And these men that I'm going to quote are not Christian at all. What Peter does here is present a three-in-one world. Now, let's look at world number one. He says, verse 5, "...for this they willingly are ignorant of." And my, that puts a great many scientists with PhDs in a pretty bad light. "...for this they willingly are ignorant of." that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, by which the world that then was being overflowed with water, it perished. That is, the world of people and actually of animals. And that world disappeared. And that can refer, as we're going to see when we get into it, either to the record in Genesis 1-1 and then 1-2, where many of us believe there's a hiatus there of a great catastrophe that took place. That's largely rejected today, I understand, by a great many Christian scientists. And they think that I'm just not keeping up to date. I had one of them, and he's a friend of mine. He wrote me quite a lengthy letter bringing me up to date. Well... Science changes every five years. The science I learned in school is certainly outmoded today, but I never accepted it at the time. I never accepted evolution. I never accepted a great many theories, so I haven't had to change. But science does change. Now, the Word of God does not change, and we're going to talk about the world it was. That could have been the world before man was put here, or it could refer to the flood of Noah, Now, I personally lean to that viewpoint, that it refers to that generation that perished. Well, let's go back now and look at the world that was. Now, you and I live in a world today that bears certain scar marks of a past judgment. You couldn't walk out here in the West, up in the high Sierras, You couldn't go into Arizona and look at the Grand Canyon, and you could not travel through this land anywhere in the West without realizing that a great catastrophe took place sometime in the past. What it was, we are not prepared on this program to say in any detail. All we're doing is just stating the fact that something happened. Obviously, something happened. And there is another great truth, and that is that there was a time when this whole area, even up on top of the high Sierras up there, they find seashells. You can't have seashells without some sea water around somewhere, and they haven't had any up there in a long, long time. But there they are in Texas. I have been hunting squirrel hunting down on the Brazos. And where the Nolan ran into the Brazos, I sat down. We were very weary. And I looked on the bank, and it was very muddy down there. There was mud up above, but then there was a layer of rock. And then beneath it, there was mud. And I went over and broke off a hunk of the rock because it was very easy to break. It was very porous. And I looked at it, and it was compressed seashell. 
A friend of mine who's a geologist, he said to me, he said at one time, Texas was covered with water. As some today think that those of us that are from there are all wet anyway. And so that the flood covered probably the entire state at one time. Well, may I say anywhere you go today, you find evidences of that. I'm sure that many of you are acquainted with the fact that many animals have been found in Siberia in deep freeze. Elephants up there and green grass still in their tummies, which means that there in the far north, all of a sudden, they were put in deep freeze. They had been in what was semi-tropical at least. And then something happened, and they have been encased in ice, and been in deep freeze. And there are those that have actually eaten the meat of these animals, and they find it quite good. Now, this is another evidence of the fact that you and I are living in a world today. It's like living on a powder keg, actually, because there has taken place a great cataclysm. And this earth bears evidence of it, and it evidently was a water judgment. Even the Greek philosophers, Thales, for instance, he speaks of the four basic elements that are in the world. And he lists them like this, water, fire, air, and earth. That was pretty good for that day. And he puts water as being number one. That was God's judgment. And it was a judgment upon the earth. Now, nature never reveals the love of God. It's nice for the poets to write about it, But you and I are living in a universe, not only this earth, but this vast universe about us today bears that. There are dark spots. They call them dark nebulae that are out yonder. They say that what apparently happened, that way beyond our Milky Way and beyond our galaxy that we are in, these dark spots appear, and it means that some great catastrophe, some great explosion took place. Well, the fact of it is not difficult to prove, but when did it take place? Now, I've suggested the flood of Noah's day. I have vacillated back from one viewpoint to another, and I suppose right now I'd be willing to go along with the Noah's day. And I think a great many of the Bible expositors today take that position. Now, there was this judgment in that pre-Adamic world before man was put here, and we know practically nothing about it. And I have gone into this before, and I'm not going to take time to go into any great length, except to mention the fact that in Isaiah 14... Beginning at verse 12, you have a suggestion of what took place in the past. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, who didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Now, Satan's desire was never to be unlike God. He wanted to take God's place. And there are many people like that today. They want to be little gods down here. Any man who's working on his own salvation, I've had several people say to me, you don't need to talk to me about what you believe. That's your theory. He says, my theory is that I'm good enough And may I say, any man that says that today ignores the fact we're dealing with a holy God, that man is a sinner and man is lost, and the third great fact that God has provided a way of redemption. And the Lord Jesus says, no man comes to the Father but by me. And he's the God-man who said that. Now, the minute you say, I can do it myself, what you're saying is, move over, God. I'm coming up where you are and I'm going to sit with you because I happen to be a God also. And that was Satan's desire. Now, that brought a judgment that evidently took out of heaven a great company of angels that followed Satan, Lucifer, son of the morning. Now, to me, it's immaterial which one you believe. The great fact is 
the world that was. And that is quite obvious that you and I are living in a world that was the world.